How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Diamond Mount channel. If you're new to me, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'm Bilton, Chris Bilton, a jeweler from London. I was a jeweler for 23, 24 years there, and now I live in Japan since last year. Uh, so I've got time, I'm still a jeweler, but uh, kind of self-employed, but I've got spare time now. So I've got my own little setup here and I'm making jewelry instructional making videos for YouTube. So I hope you like it. Right, uh, my last video that went live, I'm making collets, so I've got this little cone shape, this is the one I made in the video. Uh, one comment on that video was, I was, this is from Matthew Andrew Budge, says, I was wondering if you could cut a piece of sheet, the diameter of the collet you want to make with a hole in the middle, and then punch it out, uh, so it wouldn't have a solder join, and it's sort of like how they make coin rings. I, I've, I've seen the coin rings, I've never watched one of the videos, I don't really know how they make it. So yeah, imagine get a coin, bang a hole in it, cut a hole in it, and then just hammer it out the horizontal. So yeah, with that in mind, um, from your description, Matthew Andrew Budge, uh, you said cut, uh, I imagine you're imagining cutting a little circle, that shape, that size, and then just hammering it and pulling it out. I don't think that's gonna work. It's gonna be too severe amount of stretching on the, on the metal. Might be difficult to gauge how thin it's gonna go. So the way I'm thinking of trying it is having, like this is a washer I found, like it's gonna be like a flat disc like that with a smaller hole. So basically a small hole, I'll, I'll try and replicate this basically. Um, small hole and then that much distance away from the hole. So it's gonna be a disc, is that making sense? Like at that point wide. So not, not, too, not too dissimilar from that with a smaller hole. And then we should be able to force that down into a cone shape. But it, if it works, it might be a handy thing to know one day if you really need one with no solder join or you haven't got pliers or something, I don't know. It might be useful, so it's just fun to try new things. All right, so I've got my little bit of plate. I'm about to, about to turn into that circle. If you're interested, if you wanna have a go at this, same as me, it's 0.95 thickness. It's not too thin, but it's not too thick as well. So I've got, it'll easily go in the cone basically. And just to make my life easier, I decided to make sure my circle fits inside that, just so I can hammer it down into the biggest hole, just for convenience. But if you're actually making a collar like this, very difficult to end up with a one, the exact size you need, because you'll be, if you're making a piece of jewelry, you're gonna be making it a collet for a stone. Uh, you need it to end up an actual size, so straight away as a bit of a problem, bit of an issue I've got with this technique. Can't really understand the size of the collet you're gonna end up with. But let's just see if it works first of all. This is how quickly and roughly I'm working. Okay, what's that? It's about, it's about that big. Okay, this is gonna go in there easy. So I'm gonna just do the maximum I can in that. About in the middle. There you go. Those my dividers. Uh, too big. Cut that out. I might cut this out and change it to fast forward like the YouTube videos I was dissing. Voila. Okay, a little Brucey bonus top tip in the video. If you're ever making a disc for whatever reason, not very often you make a disc, but it happens. Uh, to get it really perfectly round, find something where it just sits above the edge and you can tap it into. No. No. 
this one. I've got a really unfortunate size here, it's not quite right. I'll, I'll file, cut it out as accurately as you can, file it to improve it. Got any little lumps. And just tap it down into something. You haven't got to go right in there, but it's just take, just sort of dent the edge perfectly round. Just take the corner off slightly. It's not really sitting in there very nicely. There you go. And that should look pretty, pretty disky. So, very little work, make a disc. I know you can buy them, but you should make stuff if you can. It saves you money, and it's all good experience. All right, I've got no idea what, what that's gonna fold up to, but quite a small hole there, so I'm just gonna drill it out. I'm imagining that punch is gonna go into the hole and open it up a little bit, if this works at all. So I'll, I'll just drill it a little bit, just to get it going. Nice sharp drill. Check out my how to sharpen a drill video. Right, I might open it up a little bit more. So I've got my disc, cut a hole quite badly in the middle. Uh, I'll anneal it again and then I'll start whacking it into the into the collet punch, see what happens. I feel, I feel nervous for some reason. Uh, I think the only trick to this is keeping it vertical. I don't want to start hammering it at funny angles. And uh, I don't know, I, I recommend having something underneath your metal block. I've got this bit of flooring tile, the same bit of carpet I've used since it was the first thing I used when I started my apprenticeship and it's, uh, it's been quite good to me. Uh, I recommend it because when you're hammering, it takes a bit of the vibration out of it so all the things on your bench don't jump around, you don't like scare people out of their skin when you suddenly hammer something. Uh, also another benefit is like using this punch, if it goes through, like I can feel it hitting the carpet there, if I'm hammering him down, the point has got a bit of a bit of suspension there, so it's not going against the hard bench. So it looks after the point of your punch. It's coning up quite nicely. I can feel it's gone rock hard, but so far it's working all right. I'm going to kneel it and then do a bit more. The hole is really taking a beating. I should have made it a bit smaller. If it goes in there, not quite. Maybe I'll start on this one. Okay. Uh, I'll kneel it again, and then uh, and I'll go on this hole. Okay, I kneeled. Still red hot. Don't care. Go on, get in there. Opening up the bottom half more than reducing the top, kind of obviously. But I'll anneal it. Let's keep going. All right, it's kind of working. Let's see if I can force it into that one now. Have some of that. Here we go. Very big. Can we go there? Not quite. I mean, this is massive. I mean, it sort of works, but... That's kind of... That's kind of it. I've uh, reached its full potential for spreading out unless I uh, get it down there but it's just going to balls up that top bit on that edge 
Uh, tell you what, I'm going to try it again with a much smaller little disc and see if I can end up with a collet a bit more sensible size. But yeah, basically, yeah, that's worked. All right, so let's try this. A tiny version. I put a very small hole, just a drill hole in the middle, just enough to grip for that point to grip into, because uh, that one just went massive. So I now know that the outer diameter didn't really reduce that much, just, just the difference I could change the tops. And uh, yeah, the bottom, basically, the, it was formed by just stretching out the bottom half loads. So let's try a smaller one. But I like no solder joins, because that means you didn't have to do a solder. I don't like soldering. And also it's just nice to not have a join. You ain't got to worry about any little lines showing up when you're polishing and stuff. Just a general all around stronger thing. So I'm just going to repeat what I did before, just keep annealing it, and then uh, hopefully end up with a nicer collet this time. Okay, this one was fast. This is only my second anneal now. It's kind of finishing it. So there you go. Again, it totally brutalizes that bottom hole. But this one's much more, much nicer shape. That'll do. So let's have a close look at what we got. Uh, yeah, this one, huge. So from what I learned, I could make it one a bit more normal. This is the one I made in the video old school usual way uh, this is the hammered out one it's a brutal technique but it does kind of work um, if I was actually going to use this I'd have to take quite a lot off that top because that edge is quite beaten up and wavy for some reason uh, so I'd lose a lot of height which might cause me a problem I might have ended up with something a bit too shallow for what I need uh, but you can't deny that's a, that's a collet that's a, a proper little cone shape the old school way, a lot more control. You can definitely end up with what you need. You've got more control of the height, you've got more control of the diameter. This one, a little bit of guesswork. But then you could work out the maths, to do, to do one, measure it before, after. There might be an element of pushing it down into the, into the sockets more than actually hammering it out. So it's got potential. I think it's, I learned something today. It might come in handy one day if I really need that shape without a solder join. It was quite quick as well, the small one. So there you go, Matthew Andrew Budge. Thanks for the inspiration for a little video, a little quick time pass for me. Uh, I learned something as well. Like I didn't, I never thought of that of trying it that way. But it, you end up with a collar. It does it does kind of work. Um, I, if you're going to have a go at making a collet, what I learned today is what I thought was going to happen. Say that's my disc. I thought it was going to do this that didn't happen what happened was this <laughs> it just pushes out the the bottom a lot more which is kind of obvious because you know the point it's only touching near the point so you're just hammering that down so i should have figured that out uh and also start with a very small hole you just need enough for the point to hold its position and then it opens it up the minimal amount and that's quite a normal size hole i ended up with at the end so that was that was cool so it does work but there's you lose a bit of control of what you're going to end up with, I think. I'm still sticking with the tradi traditional methods. It's a, a proper way to make it, but I can't deny you end up with a collet. It was really fast to make as well, just the time cutting out, milling out a bit of metal, cutting out the disc, and a bit of hammering. That was really fast, that second one. So yeah, cool, it works. And uh, just to refer back to a video I made a couple of weeks ago, it was a two-part video making ovals, uh, my, my enemy, my oval-shaped collets. I recently found this in a shop, so this was great. This has got ovals, all these different sizes, and there's eight points marked out, top, bottom, left, right, and the corners. So this is going to be useful, I think, next time I try an oval, which I'll do one soon, so I want to practice them. Uh, I'm going to use this as a guide. I think it's going to help me a lot. And I've got circles triangles and squares like what more do you need and if you're interested this is Stadler this is from Japan yeah but Stadler is a, a brand I'm sure I've seen that in in the UK sounds a bit German or Dutch or something uh, code is 97603 if you want to look up this if you want to buy it online or something 
but yeah, ovals with the corners marked out. Love it. Cool. Right. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Just uh, thank you to the uh, Matthew Thomas Butch. <laughs> so yeah, it's always fun to try new things. Uh, yeah, I learned something today. Like, I never knew. I never thought of doing that. So that was cool. Well, that worked. And. Uh, might might come in useful in the future, might not, don't know. But it's just fun to try it anyway. I like trying new things. And I have actually got an idea for making something which I've never done before, never been taught, never seen it done. But the way, what I'm gonna do is, I won't say what I'm gonna do because it's gonna be uh, for a future video, but it's a technique that will enable you to uh, get perfect beaded solder joins around something that's gonna be like impossible to polish or cut back or use files on. Uh, very awkward little angles and it will enable you to get a really perfect solder join quite easily. So I'm hoping that works. I'm looking forward to try that. That'll be a video I'm doing very soon, probably next week. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Cool. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Click like, subscribe, hit that bell. And then um, see you next time for more Diamond Mountain. Bye.